Hey guys, John here from Contrapin with another ARCHICAD tutorial. We are going to continue on with our short little series on using Curtin Wall to model in concrete block. Uh, in the previous two videos we went through and we talked about some different techniques just for uh, creating the geometry. In this video we're going to talk about two different methods for actually taking all these different concrete block systems and scheduling them out so that we can get the quantities of the blocks as well as surface area takeoffs and a number of other types of uh, parameters. So okay let's start here now. We're going to set up just a brand new schedule in this case. So we'll just go create a new schedule and I'm just going to call this CMU as our ID and this is just going to be a curtain wall block is what we'll call this and this is going to be a curtain wall system. So let's actually rename that just a little bit here. So we're just going to call this a block wall a curtain wall system. So when I say curtain wall system, we're actually going to be using the actual, uh, our main criteria here is going to be our curtain wall. So we're only going to be pulling through the curtain wall tool and we're going to add one more criteria here uh, being our master format uh, classification system. And I've already gone through and tagged these curtain wall elements with our code here for unit masonry. So uh, concrete unit masonry to be exact. So, uh, so this is a pretty simple criteria. All we're doing is filtering down any curtain walls that contain this classification. So, okay, next up, let's just go ahead and list just a few parameters here. So we can go ahead and list our element ID. We can list our type will be fine. Uh, where is it? Element type. Um, so we can, I always like adding a few takeoffs that I think will pr produce some useful information such as uh, the 3D length. Let's add our surface area. And okay, so those are some, uh, some key ones. Let's also add in our height. So these are the overall length, the overall surface area and height. And so now that we've already gone through and tagged our element type for curtain ball. You'll see down here when we go to add fields, you'll see that it will actually filter our available parameters based on this criteria here. So within our curtain wall tool, we can start listing the specific parameters um, associated with the curtain walls. So some good ones here may be like the total length of our frames. Um, in that case, this is actually the total length of our mortar joints. Um, we can get our total panel surface area. Um, there's also, let's see, there's a few others. There's a surface area including the boundary. That's always a nice one just to see and compare those two. Um, and I think that's probably, oh, the other thing. Let's get the number of panels. And let's also just get the length. We can compare the length coming from our curtain wall tool versus our 3D length. And in this case, they should be pretty close here. So, um, okay, so let's uh, let's do this. I'm gonna just take my surface area. I'm going to kind of move it down here just so we can see all these in line. So, um, okay, total length of frames. That's kind of a separate one. We'll just put that down here. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this report now. So we're looking for our CMU block wall curtain wall system. So let's go ahead and generate this. Okay, so we can see that we already are getting some content coming through. Um, one thing we can do is uh, let's just switch this around a little bit. We'll take our element type, we'll send it up to the top, and then we will turn that on as a headline. So we can see that, yes, everything in the schedule currently is a curtain wall. So if we expand this over, we can see our element IDs. Again, these are element IDs associated with the curtain wall, not any of these sub-elements. We can see our heights, our surface area, our total panel surface area. Now this is where it gets a little interesting here is where we can start comparing our total panel or our surface area versus our total panel surface area 
versus our surface area, including the boundary. So uh, when we compare these two here, those are looking like they're exactly the same versus our total panel surface area, which is going to be slightly less. But in this case, I think using uh, either one of these is probably a better all-in number versus this here, which would actually be excluding out any of our mortar joints in this case. So let's go ahead and we can kind of simplify this down. We can cut out our surface area. We can cut out our total panel surface area and really just define this by the surface area, including the boundary. So let's go ahead and uh, run this to just clean it up slightly. Okay. So let's hit our double arrow to kind of bring this through. Okay. So here we go. We have our number of panels. So this is nice because this is actually giving us the count for our uh, blocks in those. Uh, we have our total length of frames. We have our length. Um, we can actually see our 3D length does not actually come through in this case. So that's one that we can go ahead and just simply cut out. Let's remove that. But there may be a few other kind of visual ones that we can bring through here that may add just a little value here as well. So let's do like a 2D cross section preview. Let's also do a 3D AXO view. And um, we'll take both of these and just kind of drag them up in front of the, or behind the element ID. And so let's go ahead and run this now. And we're starting to look pretty good here in terms of uh, just listing out our general quantities uh, relating to these elements here. We can actually see in our 3D AXO, it actually gives us a little bit of a preview. Um, if we wanna make this a little larger, we can set this to one inch. And then by clicking on the 3D AXO, um, we can actually go in here and set the drawing scale and crank this up a little bit, maybe to like a half inch, so we can get a little bit larger view. So um, what I've actually noticed is kind of interesting here is, um, and you actually see this in the next example here when we're looking at individual curtain wall panels, is I've noticed that the 3D AXO view for those two are kind of flipped around. So we'll talk about that more here in just a minute. It's kind of a little quirk that I haven't quite figured out yet um, as to the direction of the 3D AXO view, but it seems like it's kind of reversed for the curtain wall versus the panels. So we'll talk about that here in a moment. Um, let's also go through and we can add in just a few more settings here. Um, if we wanted to be, uh, or if we wanted to associate some cost to these, we can go through and just define our unit, our unit cost, our takeoff value, and a calculated cost. And so just by going through, um, we can define those, check those, and make sure our quantities are calculating right, as well as our cost here. So, okay, so we can see that we have, let's hide this for a moment. Make it full size. So you can see here, if we plug in $15 per square foot, our takeoff value in this case is based on our um, our unit of measurement here. So we can see that that's actually, let's see, our surface area, including the boundary. Um, if we wanted to switch this up and say, switch it over to the length, then that would probably change to the 6.8, although it didn't in this case. I'll have to go check that one. Um, so anyway, so there we go. We can see 15 by 31 is, yes, about 466. So here we can see all these different variations. And okay, so it looks like we have this all coming through, calculating. Um, we can get our total for our takeoff value as well as our total cost. And, um, and yeah, that we should be looking pretty good. Our surface area, including the boundary, in this case should equal our takeoff value. So we can just double check that as we run through this. Okay, 664, 664, 7,900 for these walls. Okay, so that would be the first method here. So just to reiterate, we've built this up using our element type as just a headline. Um, we've listed out our element ID. We have some kind of cross sections and previews of our scheme here. Um, we have our heights, our surface area, number of blocks, total length of frames, the length of the wall, unit cost, um, units, takeoff values, and calculated cost here. So, okay, let's take this one step further. And um, what we'll do is we'll go back into our scheme settings. And the next step up here is we can actually, 
let's do this. Let's actually duplicate this. And instead of curtain wall system, we're going to call this curtain wall panel. And the main thing that we're going to start with here is just switching out our element type. So instead of searching for the curtain wall panel, we're going to transfer over and actually switch this to, uh, sorry, instead of looking for the curtain wall system, we'll look for the curtain wall panel. And so in this case, all of these should work out. Um, we might have some issues with this element ID, but we'll, we'll take a look at that here in a minute. Um, none of these are really going to populate here. Um, because they are curtain wall values. Um, let's actually go through, we can remove all those as well. Um, but by now going into our fields, you'll see that instead of having the curtain wall here, we can see that these probably aren't even going to relate any information at all. But we'd have this new option here for actually listing curtain wall panel uh, parameters, which is, which is what we want here. So um, in this case, we can list things like our panel type, our panel function, our panel class our panel area with or without clamps. Um, let's see, what else? We have, um, that's pro oh, we get our nominal height and our nominal width. So this would actually indicate to us if we have any uh, cut panels. And so, okay, so let's go ahead and run this. Let's just go through and just double check to make sure that these are not uh, functioning at, at this case. So let's just run this and then we'll take a look at um, what we get. So it may be a little bit of a mess that we have to clean up here. Um, I can see that we're still on the old version. Let's just click off this once it's finished. Okay, so yes, we are on our curtain wall panel and you can see here that it's listing a lot of different elements here. And the reason for that is you can see that when we create new uh, curtain wall schemes, it's actually gonna automatically go through and list new element IDs here. So this is something that is kind of congesting up our uh, schedule here. So let's go in and we can start by actually deleting that. We can also see here that our um, our surface area, number of panels, these are not coming through either. So let's remove this. Let's remove our element ID. Um, we don't really need our height because we have our nominal height down here. So let's get rid of that one. Uh, let's get rid of our 2D cross section preview. And okay, so this is going to start really kind of classifying things up. You can see here our panel type is going to just be curtain wall or custom, uh, curtain, custom panels here. So we can leave that for the moment. Our panel function in this case is fixed. So we can just remove that because that's not really relevant. Our panel class. So this is one that's really useful because it's actually going to organize it by the types of blocks. So let's go ahead and we'll bring that one up. Um, and let's go ahead and run this now. We, sh we should have cut out a lot of the variations in the reporting just by getting rid of the element ID in this case. And so now we should just be summarizing our headline by the custom blocks that we have created. Um, let's go through here and reset our scale on our 3D preview. So uh, we'll go in here and set this back to one half inch. That should really make that look much nicer. Let's see, why did that not stick? So we may just need to close this and regenerate. Okay, so here we go. We can see that, yes, that is now larger. Um, we can make this entire schedule a little larger and we'll resize our headline just a little bit. Let's go ahead and freeze our headline. So, okay, so here we go. One thing that will be useful in this case is let's add a quantity here so we can kind of start keeping track of how many blocks we have. So our quantity will be under our general parameters and there it is. So take this and let's just kind of bring it up a little bit. So, okay, so by running our quantity, um, I can see that we have not merged anything right now, so it's going to just be listing ones. But as soon as we hit that merge, once this finishes generating, then we will uh, be able to start really seeing the counts for these specific block sizes. Okay, so let's go ahead and merge. All right, so with our block 8 by 8 by 16 so this is a specific panel class that we have defined inside of our curtain wall scheme, we can see that we have 8 that are seven and five eighths by one 
three and a half. Um, you can see that we have some that are uh, about half the size. And you can see that these are very close, but they're actually slightly off. They're off by one eighth of an inch. So that's one thing that you'll have to kind of pay attention to with these is the fact that um, depending on the length of the walls, um, in this case, we have some at the very end that are not full length uh, segments. And so it's pulling that back just by a little bit. We could actually go in and extend that wall one eighth of an inch and it would actually get rid of those. But um, for now, it's fine. Um, okay, so we can see here we have our block square. Um, you can see we start getting down into our custom uh, panels that we created. So there's our spade block, six of those, 33 of this size. You can see our triangle block. And what's nice about this is that I found is the 3D AXO uh, does come through correctly in this orientation for these individual blocks. Um, I did notice that if you go into the actual blocks themselves, um, let's just take, let's take uh, as an example here, let's take the spade block. So let's go and we'll select this in 3D. So, and we'll actually exit the edit mode and we can come in here to the scheme. And if we take a look at the scheme, you'll see that everything here is just assigned to that spade block. But if we actually go to our panels and we go to our spade block, um, you'll see that currently this is set up where it's just kind of the default setting here. But I found that if we flip the panel here, um, it's going to cause us a little bit of an issue with our uh, mortar gaps, which we can fix here in a second. But it's going to actually flip the AXO view on our panel base schedule, as well as our, um, our system schedule here. So to get this to actually go back and start looking right, I'd actually flip the orientation. Then I would actually need to get in here and make an adjustment on that grout line. So I need to push it about an inch with that grout line. I can do that here by just uh, changing this value an inch. So that should shift over. Okay, so that's looking better. And so what's interesting about this now is when we go back to our block wall uh, built on the curtain wall panels, you'll see that the spade block will be flipped around so we see the back of it in that 3D AXO view. Okay, so there we are. There's our spade block. You can see that we are now looking at the back of it. But what's interesting is if we go to our curtain wall system, You can see out of all of these previews we have here, the only one that really looks right is the spade block. So um, the reason I'm pointing this out is if you want to really have this nice 3D AXO preview of your scheme here and have this looking in the right direction, it seems as though the, the, the AXO for the curtain wall system will produce a little bit better when the blocks, the custom blocks are flipped in this case. Um, it may be actually a matter of going in and saving off the blocks in the opposite or orientation. That might potentially fix this issue for us, um, but it's just something to be aware of. So I wanted to point that out. So, okay, let's go back to our panels and we'll just, uh, we'll talk about this and uh, we'll kind of wrap this video up here shortly. So similarly to um, the curtain wall system, we kind of wrap that one up talking about calculating quantities and cost. If we wanted to add in quantities and cost on the individual basis here, so by individual blocks, um, based on the fact that, actually this is something I should probably point out here. So, um, so in our scheme settings, we were already talking about this and we were talking about the criteria that we set. So the panel, and this master format for concrete block was our criteria. Very, very simple here. So one thing to be uh, very aware of is um, here in 3D and when, when going through and actually assigning um, the individual panels, you need to actually go through and make sure that you have these assigned in our, under our panels here. Um, in this case, we're looking at our uh, 
our triangle block here. So we need to make sure that we actually have these assigned and classified. So if this was not classified here, then these blocks would not actually be picked up by that criteria. So it's something that's really important is to make sure that these sub elements here in your curtain wall scheme, in this case, the panels are actually classified if you want it to uh, be fulfilled by that criteria. So that's just something that's really important because I've noticed that a lot of the times when modeling and creating new schemes, those panels will not uh, by default automatically be classified. And so certainly if you're setting up your own criteria here, that's going to go in and look for a classification assigned to the panels. You need to make sure that the panels are actually classified under those. So just wanted to point that out. That's really important. Um, as well as for adding um, and make and uh, and adding any of the custom properties, so they have to be classified the panels in order to get any of the properties for them. So okay, so one thing we can do here is we can just go ahead and we can just list in this case um, because we're pricing this or counting this by individual quantities, we can actually just list our unit cost here um, and our units. So. Um, so let's go ahead and list both of those and we can go ahead and just summarize our unit cost here. I'm going to flag our panel class so we can get a little summary based on the panel class. And so let's go ahead and run this and uh, that should wrap us up here. So, okay, there we are. We can see that we've now added the units. So these are being priced by each and we're pricing them just uh, cost per and so this here is actually just taking our unit cost um, and our quantities and it's just multiplying these and adding them up so um, so yeah there we go that's pretty much it here for the two different methods uh, once again we were talking about the curtain wall system as well as curtain wall panels in this case and we could continue on and you know list out other things such as the mortar gaps if we wanted to um, but the the process is exactly the same and, um, and yeah hopefully this was useful just to give you some ideas for how to actually run different schedules on the curtain wall. So you could use this for a number of different uh, purposes. You could use this for ceiling tiles. You could use this for uh, you know floor tile and wall tile. Um, really anything that gets laid out in a specific uh, scheme like this, you can run these schedules. So uh, pretty easy, pretty powerful stuff. And uh, again, another kind of benefit of using the this uh, curtain wall tool for modeling block work so all right if you have any questions on this then uh, please just leave it in the comments section and um, yeah we'll be back here with another tutorial on archicad very soon thanks for watching bye for now